Today I've got Mike with me with his new 4th gen that he just picked up and we thought it'd be a good idea to show the differences between the 5th gen and the 4th gen if you guys are in the market for a new truck right now and which one might be better suited for you in your application or your use. So let's jump into it. No matter what truck you go with, you're going to want to take care of it with a great oil. That's why we use Shell Rotella heavy duty diesel engine oil. The T6 is what I put in my truck and it's a great thing to check your oil every once in a while to make sure it's not low so that's what we're gonna do right now guys we're just gonna make sure we're keeping this truck on the road for as long as possible mike behind the camera you run t6 in your truck too i didn't even know that actually yeah I've um, been, yeah go ahead i said i've been running that t6 i had a older duramax that i got just under 300,000 miles on it yeah and i didn't have it long but i did wrap 30,000 miles on it and i put it over 300,000 miles so yeah and uh, i ran that t6 in it and then in this white dodge here I just changed the oil right after I bought it and I went with the T6 again. Yeah. So that's the oil I've been using for, I don't know, a couple of years now on those trucks. And so that works good. Here's what it looks like on the stick after 2000 miles. And there's what it looks like on a napkin. It's not pitch black. I guess we could compare it with your truck. You want to pop your hood. And... Oh my fuel or my oil level looks good. Dang, check out that clean engine bay, boy. I will say that, that <laughs> your hood liner looks a lot nicer than mine. Mine's done falling it's off the, the thing. the biggest difference, guys. <laughs> I do like the hoods, though, on the 5th gen compared to the 4th gen, how they got yeah. the 2500 badge right here. But I do like the little louvers they've got in the top of this hood mm, versus little, that little one. A little bit different yeah. packaging and stuff. But. Let's check this out. Let's check your levels because I don't trust Mike. He's not the best mechanic in the world, so he probably is two quarts low. I'll, I'll first wipe it with this side and then I'll flip it to a new side so we're not contaminating our test area. So I'll clean it off with that one. I'll flip this to a new side so you guys can see. Let me get it to where it's, okay. There you That's go. about, Most you said 3,000 on yours? 2,000. 2,000? 2,000 miles of running that oil. And oh. you said this is 200 This miles is probably running. 400, because I just remember I reset when I got fuel. So, yeah, this is probably a little over 400 miles on this okay. oil change. And 188,000 on the actual engine. Yeah. 188,000 miles. Okay. Show you guys a little bit different. And this is T6 Shell Rotella. All right, so that's what it looks like on the stick. Looks clean. Yeah. So it looks, still looks good, even though you got decently mild mild truck and that's what it looks like on the napkin i mean you would kind of expect that though right i, right. Mean, I mean it's a little cleaner yeah. than that but yeah. it's also uh, 1800 miles 1600 miles less than what yeah. you got on there so well sweet well if you guys want to keep your truck on the road longer like me and mike are trying to do make sure you guys check out the shell rotella heavy duty diesel engine oil their link will be down in the description below where you guys can get some more information on the road to recovery campaign getting back on track in 2021 with that said, let's jump right into the video, man. The biggest thing about the differences and what you guys need to think about when you're looking for a new truck, if you're in the market right now, is the truck market, probably no matter where you are in the, in the country, is crazy. The prices people are asking, and they're getting them. So it's kind of hard to be maybe straight out of college or straight out of high school. You just got a good paying job. You're looking at it, getting a reliable truck. It's kind of hard in this market right now, in this inflated market, to get a good truck for a good price. And it used to not be that way. Even just a year and a half ago, it just was not that way. Um, I bought my Fortune 2010 Mega Cab. By the way, this is a 2010 Ram 2500 SLT Bighorn. That is a 2021 Ram 2500 Laramie. Pretty much loaded out. So we're not talking about apples to apples here, but we are talking about generalized differences between the Fortune and the Fifth Gen and what you can pretty much get a lot of it the same and what options just aren't available in this truck, no matter if it's a 2018 Fortune or a 2010 like this one Fortune. So just some things to think about. The biggest thing that's crazy is the market. That's what, that's what this video is mostly about and showing you guys that you might be better off getting something like this rather than like I did kind of, re not regrettably, like I'm glad I bought the truck, but I am upset that I had to pay out the butt for that truck you know i just wasn't happy with the overall deal but i did really want the fit gen so you just kind of kind of you got to kind of ask yourself that if it's worth it um obviously this one comes with the cp3 and the, and the early uh six seven cummins obviously the newer six seven I mean, 21 before models. you shut that real quick 
I will say too, one big difference between buying something brand new versus buying something used is you get things with scratches, dents, and people who shouldn't be working on things be doing yes, things. That's, I that's say, I got some headlights that ordered. That might be but, an insurance claim waiting to happen there, Mike. Look at that. Ah, it's just a ground. She's I good. I don't know. But hey, man. I unhooked them. They don't work. It was for the. It had right some here. little lights or something in here. This some like no, wing light. This ain't no ground right here, Mike. Oh, I know. You trying to get they insurance? Got all, they got them all twisted. You trying to get an insurance claim? Oh, no. look at this. Oh, man. this looks like some wiring. I'm telling I would you, do, look man. at this right here. This is this is a uh, Romex, like house wire. Right? That is house wire. <laughs> Holy crap! I'm telling you, dude. People shouldn't. Some dude. people shouldn't touch their stuff. But I went. I went ahead and unhooked those because dude, check, uh, check this they're. Out. I don't know they're both bad. I say it's, it ain't no joke out here. They shouldn't have shouldn't have really got what they were doing here. So that is. It's just like when I buy a truck, no matter what year it is, it always seems like the previous owner had no idea what they were doing, and I have to go back and figure out what they were thinking. Right. But like you said, that's just one thing you got to think about. Obviously, if you're buying a truck and it's a fortune, someone's owned it before. What have they done to it? You know, where, right. what have they taken it through? Um, you know, a lot of times it's not a big deal. They're trucks. They're meant to be worked. It's not the biggest deal in the world if they're dirty, if the engine bay's dirty. I'm not talking about stuff like that. I'm talking about wiring. I'm talking about different upgrades that maybe weren't done right. Uh, maybe the valves weren't lashed correctly or, you know, just things that you have to think about whether we want to talk about it or not. They things that need to be somewhat brought up. So it, uh, you're going to get a, a drastic of a price difference. I'm not going to give the exact price I paid for my truck. I know Mike's not going to give the exact price he paid for his truck, but generally you'd be saving about around 50 or so thousand dollars from that truck to this truck which you could buy two of these if not three of them in the right market in the right times of these then you can something like that so your powertrain is pretty much the same your axles your transmission the 68 rfe this one's got an upgraded valve body some pressure settings and the torque converter is a little upgraded and beefier on the newer ones the 68 rfes everyone knows they had a lot of issues but Typically, if you got one with mileage like his and it's still going good, actually, yours has been replaced, right? Yeah, it's got, uh, they replaced it just over 3,000 miles ago. So right before I picked it up, they had a transmission replaced and the whole entire front end rebuilt, so. It wasn't covered under warranty because I know the powertrain on these is, what, 100 and I'm not 000? sure. I'd say, well, if, if it was, now because it was 3,000 miles ago, I think the guy paid for it all out of pocket. Okay. But it is thing has a whole new AC system, uh, whole front end rebuilt and then it has a new transmission in it so by the way if you guys haven't seen mike we're not going to let him hide behind the camera too long you guys know my boy mike we went out to the pool house last night got out uh we got some shrimp yeah. grabbed a couple beers just hanging out and we were thinking about the differences in the crazy truck market right now and we were talking about his new truck of course he just picked this up we thought it'd be a great opportunity to show you guys kind of two different worlds and a lot of times, 99% of the time, a fourth gen might be better. I just got out of a fourth gen, so right. obviously I had mine for a reason. I love these trucks. There's a lot of good things about them. And I don't think, in my opinion, correct me if I'm wrong, there's not a better truck for the money on the market than a fourth gen Ram 2500 with a 6.7. No. I don't I, think so. It's hard. You know, I mean, I would like to have a new truck, but the, the only difference between getting this truck and that truck is a dollar amount at the end of the day for me. So that was my... That was what I actually, that was my deciding factor, whether I wanted to go buy a new truck or buy something a little cheaper, a little more friendly on my budget. So I bought an older truck. Yes, it's got miles. Yes, somebody's driven it 188,000 miles. Well, it was 186 when I got it. I put 2,000 miles on it. But 186 or 188,000 miles now. So you've got someone who's rode in that seat for those 188,000 miles. It's got rock chips and dings on the hood got a dent on the roof it looks like a tree fell on it or something but like i said it wasn't it wasn't a free truck but it was a good price for it's still a reliable truck exactly you know, it's, it, to me exactly. it's just a, it's another work truck i got something that'll last it'll tow my tractor it does what i need it to do so exactly so a lot of times something like this is a great option for people what I wanted to mention a second ago is I bought my 2010, just to show you how crazy the market is right now, I bought my 2010 Ram 2500 Mega Cab. About two and a half years ago, I just sold it a few months back. I got more money in this market after putting 35,000 miles on it than I paid for it two and a half years ago. I literally made like $3,000 on that truck and put 35,000 miles on it. So that just shows you how crazy the truck market is right now. And that was a trade-in. That wasn't even to a private buyer. I, should, I probably could have got more if I went privately on the sale, but... I traded it in to get my wife a new car. So I just kind of shows you 
The exteriors, I know what people say. There's not many differences, and you're right. You know, a lot of the doors and panels are exactly the same. Uh, it look pretty much the same other than the front end and maybe a couple things on the tailgate and badges. I got that. Um, but hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I love the look of this truck, just like I love the look of the fit gen. I don't think they needed to make a lot of big changes. The biggest things are the amenities. Um, things like adaptive cruise control, 360 cameras. There's cameras everywhere on this truck in the mirrors on the grill, on the front of the windshield, on the top there, there's cameras everywhere. And uh, you know, safety features like blind spot assist. I know there's a lot of those features in the 410s too. Uh, even in the 2010, I think they had the blind spot assist if I can remember correctly, it just it had to be packaged in, I believe. Um, getting into the inside, we're, you know, we're not gonna, we're not gonna beat a dead horse because you guys know a lot of this stuff. And a lot of this is an apples to apples because they're different packages. But things you're going to have to worry about, wear and tear in the interior, which some people don't care about, and things like the dash, you know, your speaker systems, which these came with the Alpine in the Laramies, which I had on my 2010. And then the Harman Kardon system is in the 21s and the Fit Gens. Sounds a little bit better. So, you know, you, you get different things and you just got to ask yourself, is it worth it? Some people it is, some people it may not be. Uh, I think we're actually going to be detailing up this truck today, getting a lot of this a lot of this overspray from his bed liner he just did off. So stay tuned for that video, guys. That's going to be next. We're going to be getting a lot of this off and, and detailing this up. So if you guys are interested in wondering how to clean up maybe a used truck, maybe you do decide to buy a used truck and you want to clean it up now, we're going to show you how to do all that from stripe removal to decontaminating the side and getting, you know, some swirls and scratches out. So uh, we'll pop open the back seat here. As far as the spacing goes, it's the same as the fifth gen. It's in the regular models, not the Mega Cab, it is a little cramped in here. Uh, my Ford 2019 F250 I had, had a lot more room in the cab. And that's one of the things I don't like as much about the fit gen, is that there's just not as much room in the cab. Does it feel small? No, but it just would be better to have a little bit more leg room. So that gives you guys kind of a general idea. We're gonna do the same thing with this truck. We're not gonna beat a dead horse. Of course, you guys know it has the Uconnect. It has the whole 17 speaker sound system. Um, it has the sub under the back seat here, the Harman Kardon system. So it's just all about features. It's got the outlets back here for the rear passengers, everything from USB to your standard 115 volt. It's got the floor mats, it's got the Alcantara and the leather. It's got speakers on every inch of this pretty much. Um, it's got the huge screen and the digital dash. The, as far as the storage compartment and the cup holders are pretty much the same. You got maybe a little bit more cubic feet, uh, cubic inches, I think they rate it as on a truck. Right. As far as room goes, if you got was a, a little bit more. If it was a, the, Lar the Laramies of this year, or this year, here, yeah. you can get them with that full center console as well. But mine being that it's a SLT Bighorn, it has the jump seat, which also has a uh, storage underneath the bottom of it. I didn't know that until yep. I was uh, when I was cleaning it out, I realized there was another compartment there. Yeah. So both of them have a ton of storage. Let's jump around to the driver's side. That's where most people are going to want to know the differences. That's where they're at. Forgot that camera was rolling. <laughs> but the uh, tow mirrors are pretty much the exact same other than you got lights integrated into these, which are pretty sweet. Right. The Chevys have had those forever, and I always wanted Dodge to get them or Ram to get them. And they finally got them, which is pretty sweet. So that's something that's pretty cool. The door's pretty much the same. You got your memory seats, you got your, your tow mirrors in and out, whatever, automatic. Everything as far as the switches are pretty much the exact same. The steering wheel, you got the adaptive cruise on this one. You've got the controls pretty much all on it. The uh, foot pedals you can adjust. You can, when you get in and out of the truck, it automatically goes back and forward to put you in your right spot to make it easier to get out. Um, it has a digital rear view mirror this is digital it's a screen there's a camera back there you can change it from digital or if you want a regular rear view mirror you can change it as well by pressing a button so that is pretty cool you can drop your tailgate when you back up to a gooseneck drop it automatically uh, i do think that feature was available in the late fortunes as well though so you know it's just it's all about features guys and um something like this would cost you in the seventy-five thousand range out the door generally that's a general number and you may be able to find a better deal somewhere 
but um, the fortunes right now, a kind of in a Laramie, are going around twenty-five thousand ish. You may get a little bit better deal, maybe a worse deal. It just depends. But generally, that's kind of where they are. So, seventy-five to twenty-five, fifty thousand dollar difference. Is it worth it? I don't know. Um, you know, you got to think you, about things like you've got maintenance, that ride control too. The oh, air the rams, suspension yeah. here on the rear. Yeah, the so my truck's leaf springs compared to this. Yeah, it's got bags, automatic suspension, levels out when you pull on a trailer. Of course, it's four linked. It's got the bigger control arms in the front. There's a lot of suspension upgrades in this truck. So it's that's one of the things that is that is good about the ride comfort. And when you do pull a trailer, it's a little bit better. But other than that, I mean, almost everything is the same. You right. got to ask yourself: Is fifty thousand? I, I bought this truck, and I'll say fifty thousand is pretty much almost not even worth the, the difference because of how similar they are. Um, it's just something you got to ask yourself in this crazy market. Do you do you just buy a fortune and wait it out, or do you just want to jump into a, a fitch and, and get the amenities? That's that's the that's biggest even thing. if you can get one. Yeah, I mean <laughs> they are hard to find, and that's the biggest thing. It's not it's not um, anything other than they're just not that many out. It's supply and demand, simple supply and demand. I guess. I never thought it would come to this, but I guess we're waiting on computers from overseas is a lot of times why these trucks are sitting in lots at manufacturing plants, waiting on computers for overseas. I read something in the newspaper the other day that I guess there's thousands of F-250s and F-150s just sitting at the plant waiting to go to dealerships because they don't have any computers. They can't turn on. So it's just, you know, one of those things we're living in a crazy time and the, those are the biggest things I wanted to hit on in this video. If you're in the market for a fortune or fitch in, which one should you maybe look at and why? Comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. Do you guys think that it would be worth going to a fitch in or will it just be smart to kind of wait this crazy market out in these crazy times out and just ride around in a fortune? Fortunes are great trucks. I love mine. I, I love mine a lot. I was telling Mike at lunch today uh, we went out to a, a restaurant here locally that we like to eat at. I was telling him that, you know, the biggest thing, the biggest reason why I went with a newer truck, just like when I got my 19 F-250, is th just the maintenance, man. You know, I I'm so busy right now. Everyone seems like they're so busy right now. I know Mike is. And just it seemed like every time I would go to drive my older trucks, my older diesel trucks, there would be something wrong. It would always be something simple like APPS um, sensor or... A TPS sensor or a VP44. I guess that's not simple, but it was always something an injector or batteries alternator water pump Power steering pump was leaking oil. It was it was always something and that to me my personal choice That's why I I'm just like I don't have time to put this thing in the shop every other month You know, I, I've got to keep this thing on the road for longer one of the reasons why I'm running Shell T6 heavy-duty diesel engine oil is because I don't have time to, to have this thing in the shop all the time. I, I need something on the road constantly. And uh, some of you guys may be in the same boat as me, but that's pretty much what I wanted to come across in this video. I will let Mike end it out however he wants his opinion on getting a fortune or a fifth gen and why maybe he chose something like that in this crazy market. Well, if you know me, I do a lot of buying, I do a lot of trading and I do a lot of selling. So uh, I rolled through uh, a Duramax to a second gen to a, so a first gen Duramax to a second gen Cummins to a first gen, uh, I don't even know what you would call it, an NBS Silverado that had a big turbo on it. And then I got a Razor out of that too. And now I'm over on this truck here, but I just wanted something because I was towing my tractor with my Duramax and it towed it fine, you know. I towed it with that second gen, it towed it fine, but also I'm in the same boat as him as I don't want to have an issue with like, oh, this is gonna, batteries die. Well, I mean, batteries dying, that's whatever, you know, that happens, but I don't it want to like it at all. It was always something. something, you know, if the AC goes out or if the, I don't even know what to say, I mean, injectors, you got all there's a laundry list of stuff, Bell, fuel pump, just bell, I mean, it's, dude. It's, as long as you do just proper maintenance and just take up on your car or take care of your cars and stuff, you know, it, they'll run you, you know, so. Exactly, so it's all about how you maintain it. It's all about how you maintain it. But you don't always know who, how the person maintained it ahead of you. you. Biggest thing is, if you guys take anything from this video, change your freaking fuel filters. 
every at least third oil change, change your fuel filters. No matter what truck you got, Power Stroke, Cummins, Duramax, doesn't matter. Change your fuel filters. They're so cheap. They're so quick. They can save you from a ton of issues. If you, that's just a funny thing. But if you watch, I'm not telling you to watch my channel, but if you watched my video. Where Link I, down below. I got this truck here. I changed the oil on it in that video. I got it. Um, I also ran this thing out of fuel because the fuel gauge is, uh, it stops at half tank and I got 555 or 550 miles out of it and it ran out of fuel. But when I changed the oil on it, I changed the air filter. Air filter was just caked full of dirt and oil. I bought a Jeep for my wife, same thing. Air filter just caked for a, full of dirt and oil. And on that Duramax when I bought it, the filter was sucked up into the intake horn because it was so plugged up. No one does proper maintenance on your stuff. That's the worst thing about buying a used vehicle is people don't do maintenance on their stuff and just condition of like exterior stuff of just an older vehicle. Exactly. So as long as you're maintaining your truck, I think both these will be great options. That's going to do it for this one. Let us know down in the comments whether you think the Fortune or the Fitchin is right for this market in today's crazy economic situation. Let us know down in the comments below. Smash the like button. Make sure you're giving Mike a follow on his channel. He'll be linked down below. He's got all sorts of crazy stuff always going on on his channel. And he is always got something new, it seems, because he trades so much. So yeah. you're never going to get bored on his channel. Shout out to Shell Rotella T6 Heavy Duty Diesel Engine Oil for sponsoring the channel for 2021 get back on the road to recovery check out their campaign in the description below and that'll be it for this video we're going to jump right into the next video so you guys be look be on the lookout for the next day or so for a video coming out on his truck we're going to be do doing a lot of things from odor removal inside because it smells like freaking weed inside his truck right now so is it legal in florida story behind that is legal in florida uh i think um if you have a prescription I got the truck in Florida, and it does reek of marijuana. Yeah, it, but you can't use it um, recreationally. I don't think you can right. use it, you know, out and, and about. Maybe California you can, but not Florida, where you got right. the truck. <laughs> but this thing <laughs> smells like weed, and uh, long story about that, check out, check that out in the next video. Long story short, Mike is just a freaking stoner, so he smokes weed whoa, and puts whoa. it in his truck. <laughs> no, I'm just not kidding. Me, me. Nah, he bought the truck like that, and we got to get that stink out of there because... Me as a police officer, I went to check out his truck and I could smell it before I even got close to it. And he hasn't had weed in it for weeks. Yeah. And I smelt it immediately. I was like, dude, there's freaking weed in here. If I were to pull you over, I'm definitely getting probable cause to search that vehicle, at least in the state of Alabama where I patrol. But anyway, uh, check out that video here in a couple of days, guys. We'll see you in the next one. Peace. I go straight from the bank. Passing up the tank, cranking up the radio, playing old Hank, and it ain't that long till I'm back at